Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these jellyfish tentacles. This tutorial is my attempt to recreate a work by Just Van Rossum, who also has a wonderful collection of animated GIFs, which I'll link his stuff down below. Let's start by drawing just one tentacle. A tentacle is composed of a set of circles similar to kelps rooted in sand and water. These sets of circles as part of one tentacle is tied to its roots with a varying distance of radius r from the center point. To determine the x and y coordinates of each of these circles, we'll be using trigonometry to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. First, I want to translate the origin point that is now at the top left corner of our canvas to the center of the canvas. And I can do that by using the translate function and provide the arguments of where I want the new origin to be, which is width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And then now I'm going to draw an ellipse or a circle. And an ellipse function takes in a total of four arguments, the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle and then the width and the height. So I'm going to put 0, 0, and let's do 10 by 10. And I'm going to fill this circle green. Now this small green circle is going to be the root where all the circles as part of the tentacle is going to be tied to. So now I want to declare a few variables. So let's start with r and then give the radius r to be 100. And then I am going to use trigonometry and essentially the two functions I'm going to use is x equals to r times cosine of angle and y equals to r times sine of angle. I also need to declare angle and I'm going to set it to zero and I will be using the angle mode degrees so I want to put in angle mode of degrees in setup all right and then I'm going to draw a new ellipse or a new circle at x and y and I'm going to give the width and the height as a variable called c size which is the size of the circle let's do how about 30 and c size comma c size perfect and then let's give it a different color how about white we only have one circle but it is tied to this center point now i'm going to declare a new variable called num and let's set num to how about five and num is going to be a number of circles as part of this tentacle underneath translate function i can use a for loop that goes through i equals to 0 to i less than num. And I'm going to put in these set of commands inside here. And if I just click run now, you see the same thing, even though there are a total of five circles being drawn at the same position. And that is because we give the x and y position to be the same every time it goes through this draw loop. So what we need to do is that we need to vary the size of the radius here and we can do that by multiplying it by i divided by num minus 1 for both the x and y coordinates now let's run all right so you can see that there are a total of five circles right so when i equals to zero this whole thing equals to zero. So x and y is zero. And then we have this first circle that is on top of our root here. And then when i equals to num minus one, so this whole thing becomes one. So now the radius is r, which is 100. And then we get this fifth circle here. Next, we want to also vary the size. So I want the closer the circle is to the root, the smaller it gets. So we can approach this in a few ways. The first way is that we can do it the same way that we do it here where we multiply it by i divided by num minus 1. And if you run this, you can see that the closest circle to the root, the size is actually 0, so you cannot actually see the circle. And I don't want actually the size to be this dramatically different from each other. So the way that I actually want to approach it is that I want to just add it by i. And as you might have guessed, the size doesn't vary that much. But you can vary the variables here, and that's when you can see the change more dramatically. The next thing we want to do is that we want to give each of these circles a different starting angle. So right now we just have one variable here inside the cosine and the sine function, which is angle that is set to zero. 
right? And that's why you have this horizontal line here. But let's try giving it, let's do plus 45. You can see that the circles kind of move a little bit to the left, right? And if we add 45 here, you get this diagonal line, which is essentially cosine of 45 and sine of 45, right? But we also don't want to give a starting angle that is the same for all of the circles because we cannot get that spiral look. What we can do is that what if we multiply this by i, right? Because i is essentially a variable that varies between each of the circles. So let's try that. All right, so now you can see that it gives us that spiral look that we want. What if we set a variable t for this 45 angle here, the starting angle, and we can vary it here. So the smaller the value here, the smaller the change in the angle for each of the circles. So you can play around with that variable as well. So I'm going to leave it here for now. And then now to move the tentacle, all we have to do is that we just increment the angle. And how about we increment it by just one degree at a time. So now this tentacle moves in the clockwise direction. Perfect. And this is pretty much how you make this one tentacle. Now I want to change the values inside these variables before we move to the next step. So I'm going to set the radius to 15 and then size to 10. Let's do num to be 15 and then t, let's set that to 10. So this is pretty much what we will have as the end result for one tentacle. Now let's make a set of tentacles. So let's first declare the number of columns. Let's start by how about just do four and rows equals to also four. I'm going to set a size to, so the size is going to be the size or the offset between each of the tentacles. So let's do how about 25. And then the variable angle has to be changed to an array. So I'm going to call it angles. And then inside a set of function, I'm going to write a nested for loop to create a 2D arrays for the angles array. So for let i equals to zero, i less than columns, i plus plus. And then for let j equals to zero, j less than rows, and then j plus plus. Inside the outer loop, we're going to put in angles of i to be equals to empty 1D arrays. And then angles of i and j will be set to, we're going to start with zero for now. And then now inside the draw function, we're also going to write a nested for loop. Same thing here. Then we're going to move all of these inside these nested for loop. A few things we need to tweak. So the angle variable here, we need to change it to angles of i and j. Same things here. Okay, everything else should be the same. Oh, angles here too. And if we click run, we now also have to change this i variable to k, right? Because we have the outer loop i, we have the first inner loop j, and then now we have the second inner loop. So let's do k here. K, k, k here. Oh, this is i and j for the angles. K here, k here. K here and K here and K here. All right, and as you can see here, there's only one tentacle, even though we want to draw a grid of tentacles. And that is because right now the X and Y locations are the same, right? So what we have to do is we want to first create an offset. So i times size plus x, and then j times size plus y. Let's try that. All right, so now we have a set of tentacles that are a distance size from each other in the horizontal and the vertical direction. Perfect. But as you can see here, it is a little bit off center, right? So now we want to move it. So how do we do that? I'm going to change this value from 15 to just one so that we can work with a simpler set of circles. And because I set num to be equals to one, I'm going to modify this equation to be just num for now because num minus one is zero and then it will give us an error when 
something is divided by zero. We'll put it back in afterwards. So let's try this and then let's click run. All right, so now we have a set of four by four circles based on the number of columns and rows, right? And as you can see here, we want this point here to be actually at the green circle or the root of all of this. <laughs> all right, so what we can do is that first, I'm going to declare two more variables called x margin and y margin, right? And I'm actually going to put item size here and here. And then j item size here and here. All right. So what I want to do is that I want to move it to the left and then up. But by how much? As you can see here, I want to first move it by size, which is the distance between each column and each row, and then times it by the number of columns divided by two, right? So let's try that. So plus, no, subtract size times columns divided by two. Oh, we also need to add the X margin here and the Y margin here. Okay. All right, so now it moves to the left. So we'll do the same thing to this side. So size times rows divided by two. All right, but I actually want this point here. So I'm going to also add by an offset of size divided by two. Perfect. So now we have the X margin and Y margin that we want. So if you come back here, and if we were to change the number of rows and columns, you can see that now it is smacked in the middle and you can change the size as you want, right? Okay, I'm going to keep it at 10 by 10. Then now I'm going to change it back to 15 here and then num minus one here and num minus one. Ta-da! Okay, now I'm going to stop it from moving. Now you can see that all of the tentacles have the same shape and I want it to be a little bit different based on where it is on this grid. So it's gonna be dependent on which row and which column it is on. So I'm going to add, how about I here and J here, just to see what happens. You can't see much. How about if we multiply it by also K? All right, you can see that there is no change in the tentacle that has i and j equals to zero, right? And then all the other ones, the distance between each of these circles are far apart. But I don't want it to actually change like this, where the most top left one is the one that is unchanged. I want the one that is unchanged to be the one closest to the middle. So I can do, how about, so k is the circles inside each of these tentacles, right? What if we, instead of just multiplying by i, we do i minus, how about, columns? If we do just i minus columns, just to show you, so this one would be j minus rows, right? It does the same thing, but it just moved the unchanged one to be the one that is the bottom right. So what if we divide this by two? And this is where you can play around to get a different look. But you can see that the one that are closest to the borders are the ones that are changing the most. So this is what I want. Let's uncomment this part. And what if we change the increment to four? All right, so we now get the movement that we want, but it's almost off the screen here. So what I want to do is that I want to multiply this variable k here by 0 0.7 to keep it or make it a little bit tighter. So let's try that. All right, so right now our angle studio array have all the values of zero. That means if we run it again, you can see that it's moving 
in the same exact direction. But what we want is that we want this starting angle for each of the tentacles to be different, random almost. And we can generate random values for the starting angles of each of the tentacles. But instead of using the random function, I'm gonna use a function called noise, which is based on Perlin noise. And Perlin noise is an algorithm that allows us to generate random values in a smooth-like manner. And I have a whole set of videos on how to use Perlin noise. I'm not gonna go into details in this video Video, but I will link it down below so you can check it out. So we need to declare a few more variables. So the first one is x off. I'm going to set it to zero. Y off also to zero. And let's do increment to be how about 0 0.1. And then inside a setup function. So now instead of setting the angles of i and j to be zero, I'm going to set it to the noise function to 2d1. So I'm going to provide two arguments, which is x off and y off, right? And right now, if we just give x off and y off, it's only going to generate this one value. So we need to increment the x off and y off values. So I'm going to set x off to be 0 here, and then y off to be 0 every time it goes through the outer loop again. And then we're going to increment y off here by the increment variable here and x off value by also the increment. The noise function outputs a value between 0 and 1, so we also want to map it to angle 0 to 360. And we can use a map function, or we can just multiply it by the number as I do it here. And let's just try and play it. All right. And as you can see here, because we use the increment of 0 0.1, it is not as random as I would like, so I'm going to use 0 0.7. And there you go. Now I'm going to change the appearance. First, I'm going to comment out this green circle here. And then I'm going to change the background color to blue. So 00, zero a dark blue, right? And now, as you can see here, all the tentacles are the same colors, right? So I want it to change the transparency. And so I'm going to do that inside this second nested loop here. I'm going to put in fill of 255, and then I'm going to set this transparency to be 255 times k divided by num minus 1. And then I'm also going to give it no stroke. I also need to delete this part. And there you go. These are your jellyfish tentacles that are super fun to make and also to watch. So this is one of the examples that really combines many different concepts that we learn in this channel, including how to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, how to work with circular motion, how to create a 2D array and use it to store different values in a grid of rows and columns, and also Perlin noise. So I really recommend you looking into each of these concepts and give this one a try.